I'm a health services researcher, and I do research on leadership science uh, for, the, for the most part. And what I'm particularly interested in um, are the behaviors, the practices, the decisions, and the communication styles of hospital administrators. So managers, directors, CEO, vice presidents, and looking at the impact that those practices have on work environments for staff and on outcomes for staff, and now ultimately on patients. So um, the question is, can you quantify um, the impact of management styles and hospitals and leadership styles on patient outcomes? And we found that you can. So there's a question as to why would, why would we look at leadership? There is so much uh, that is written about leadership. Uh, you can find the latest book in any airport bookstore. Um, there's a lot written on leadership and there's a lot of research, but the question is um, how applicable is it to healthcare? The focus that I've looked at in, in leadership is uh, emotional intelligent leadership. So distinguishing those leadership styles where the leaders are high in emotional intelligence, so they, have, um, they can manage their own emotions, they're aware of their own emotions and manage, can manage them. They're also uh, very astute at developing relationships with others and managing those relationships to improve uh, or to achieve outcomes. And those le leadership styles are called resonant styles because they draw people to them. Those kinds of leaders draw um, other individuals to them. They want to work with individuals who are good at developing relationships. Dissonant leadership styles um, are the command and control kind of styles, the pace setting styles, the being on the bleeding or the leading edge of innovation all the time um, at the expense of individual people. Um, those are called dissonant leadership styles and they're considered to be low in emotional intelligence. So in some studies that, um, that I've led, we've looked at the impact on nurses of um, when they went through restructuring in the 1990s and lots of nurses were laid off, whether the, those nurses that worked for resonant leaders fared any differently um, than those nurses that worked for pace setting and commanding leaders. And in fact, there was a very stark difference that nurses that worked for resonant leaders um, had much lower emotional exhaustion, they had much lower other kinds of effects of restructuring, which includes drug use, um, um, poor communication with physicians and with, um, with other team members, and um, they were but much better able to uh, provide care for their patients. So the next study that we looked at was um, whether the leadership styles would impact mortality. So we took the data from 90 hospitals in Alberta, and after controlling for um, all of the various effects um, on mortality, such as patient age, gender, comorbidities, uh, diagnosis, et cetera, which we know um, contributes about 50% to mortality rates. Then we also looked at um, other factors like staffing um, mix. So if you have more staff, then you have lower mortality, et cetera. Hospital size, where the hospital was located, urban and rural. And then after we controlled for all of those things, then we looked at what's the contribution of hospitals that um, were deemed as resonant leadership hospitals, those that were dissonant, and then three other categories in between, sort of along a gradient, where they kind of had mixed a little bit of resonant leadership, a little bit of dissonant leadership within the hospital. And in the outcome of that is that hospitals where the leadership is, um, displays resonant styles um, had 26% lower mortality after controlling for everything else than, um, than all those hospitals that had mixed styles, where the communication could be ambiguous, where the expectations could be ambiguous for staff, um, et cetera. So the total contribution of leadership to the mortality in this model was 6%, which means that six out of every 100 deaths um, in this population could be attributed to how those hospitals are managed. So the challenge for KT, for knowledge translation and leadership, um, is borne out in many studies, um, mine as well as many others, and that is that most people who are in leadership positions assess themselves at about 20% better leadership than what their staff would say about them. So um, there's a little bit of challenge with insight and seeing what their own leadership needs are and their own developmental needs. And so that certainly identifies that organizations need to have some expectations around how their managers and how their leaders will behave and that there'll be an expectation that developing relationships to achieve the work 
is absolutely fundamental. Thank you.